all languages are local to the area from which it originated. Goge Wathiongo, a prolific writer, formerly working in English and now works in Gekoyo, an African language from his place of birth, has been on the forefront encouraging writers to embrace native African languages. So what changed his mind from writing in English to Gekoyo? I did this in 1977, 76, first because I was working in a village in Limuru called Kameredo Community Education Cultural Center. And he was working with ordinary people in the village where they come from. You have really to work with the language of that community. Whatever it is, only in this case it happened to be the code language. Okay. And we produced a play called Gahika Deda in the Kuyo. It was very, very popular. Uh, later, it was translated into English as no matter when I want. But the Kenya government of the time, an African government, stopped the place. He was arrested on December 1977, and when 1978 came knocking, he found himself as a prisoner with just a number. And it's when I was in committee maximum security prison, I started thinking more seriously about the language issue and the implications of how we use language and what language you use and when, mm. or even our own attitudes to our own languages. Mm. And that's really when I made the decision to not write my novels anymore in English. Mm -hmm. And I wrote my first novel in Ikoyo mm -hmm. called Shaitani Modarafaine, mm -hmm. and later translated it into English as uh, you know, Devil on the Cross. Devil on the Cross is a play set against the background of post-colonial era in Kenya. He wrote a play on toilet paper during his time in prison. It tackles various themes including exploitation, education and sexual harassment. During the time in prison, something else came up. Years later, the thoughts which I developed while in prison were the thoughts which became the book Decolonizing the Mind. Decolonizing the Mind is a collection of non-fiction essay about language and its constructive role in national culture, history and identity. And how has the reception been? Initially when the book Decolonizing the Mind mm -hmm. came out in 1984 or 1985, I got a lot of resistance from African intellectuals, you know, uh, generally, you know. I remember one who said that I was asking people so like asking somebody to drive a car, but with the rear, only using the rear view mirror. Huh? Like I remember that image very strongly, yeah. But over time, I've seen changes in attitudes, right? Mm -hmm. And now I believe there's no conference anywhere in the world to do the African literature that you can attend without the question of language. One of the major challenges facing young writers is getting a publisher. How did Goge Wathiongo manage to get his book published when he started off? All publishing houses at the time, ne or nearly all of them, were based in London. Okay? But now, whatever the difficulties, there are very many publishing houses, for instance, actually located uh, in Kenya and East Africa. So all I would say is that for young writers, you know, you have to dare, you know, you have to keep on knocking on the door, set to publishers. If they don't, put in a blog or in a in a in a in, in a, a website or something, right? So, and then just see what happens.